Welcome back along with Dave Lesky and George Kilpatrick. The latest poll shows 70 percent of Americans support the war with Iraq. Despite that, peace activists continue to oppose the war. Now joining us are two members of the Syracuse Peace Council. We welcome Andy Major and Diane Swords to the program. Thank you both very much for being here. Glad and to be here with you. Us. And do you feel it's appropriate to oppose the war now? Let's hear from you, 451-2414. We'll take your emails, of course, if that's more convenient. We welcome your input. Hmm. George, uh, you mentioned uh, at the top of the segment the, the latest polls, some 70 percent uh, say they support the war in Iraq anyway. Do, do poll numbers and public opinion affect uh, peace demonstrators and peace marchers in any way, shape, or form, or is it really uh, something that you don't even concern yourself with? Well, we certainly are concerned about public opinion because much of our work is trying to affect public sure. opinion to get people to see that, in fact, although this war was wrong before it was launched, then it remains wrong now. However, we also we act on our own understanding of things, our own beliefs and morals. So. Even if the war were less popular, we wouldn't stop doing what we're doing. But we try to, to reach people, to recognize that people have values as Americans and that we need to encourage them to look at how this war really violates those fundamental American values. I would also add that our experience is very different from that. When we're out demonstrating and cars go by, um, you get the just, honks. Do we you? get the honks. Yeah. We get a lot of support. It's actually very different from during the first Gulf War. Uh, when there was a lot more negative feedback. Mm. So um, I, I question the nuanced nature of those numbers. And I think that when a war starts, um, people feel, uh, don't always perceive the difference between supporting the troops and supporting the war. What is the difference? We, f we feel that it's very important to support the people who have been sent to uh, fight against, many times against their, um, their will. Um, and we feel that the government does, has not supported veterans well in the past. And um, these soldiers are being exposed to depleted uranium weapons, which uh, we know that some 200,000 uh, veterans from the first Gulf War have, ha have come, uh, come down with Gulf War syndrome that's been uh, traced back to depleted uranium that's being used now. Uh, so there are many ways in which being in this situation is is not in the interest of, of these the, the people who are fighting there. What is the, the, the ultimate goal of of peace activists? Is it to influence the government? Is it is it to try and influence uh, other public opinion? What is the primary reason? Well our goal is to try and create a world that's based on peace and social justice that we believe as Dr. King said so eloquently that justice and peace are linked together so that we can't have true peace even if there isn't an active war unless there's justice in our society and around the world. So that's what we advocate for. We try to both do things which influence public opinion as well as lobby. Uh, right now it's clear the government, the Congress has abdicated their role in all of this by giving the Bush administration a blank check. So our primary focus is on public opinion. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the, the most immediate situation, we think that we have already impacted things so that the government is much more conscious about civilian casualties than they would have been if there weren't such a strong peace movement in this country. And TV coverage for that matter. Right. And we're also we're looking beyond this war because this war is part of a very frightening new development that the Bush administration has expressed, which is an open desire for the U.S. to militarily be able to dominate the rest of the world so that sites after Iraq may be looked at on Iran or Syria or North Korea. So we want to try and prevent those wars and encourage people to speak up. We, we value democracy in this country. That's what we're exercising. So would, when people say that you're unpatriotic because this is a time when we should be waving the flag and standing up for the American troops, you respond in what way? I, I think of the quote that is often misquoted. Um, many people will say, my country right or wrong. But the full quote is, my country right or wrong when wrong to be set right. And that's patriotism when, when we are working to set our country right when we feel that it's doing the wrong thing. And acting, I believe, not even in the interests of our own country. So, all right, when you, when you hear that and you hear that People, you're considered unpatriotic, you're not supportive of the troops. What then is your main opposition and what do you say to those people? Well, I say that 
the government has been giving us a lot of misinformation to justify this war and that we need to, um, to insist that they give us accurate information, that it's clear that um, information about the links between Saddam Hussein and al-Qaeda, they continue to sort of make these vague allegations about it, but they have no proof or they would have presented it to us, similarly with weapons of mass destruction. And if we're going to have democracy in this country, people need to be informed. We need to know what's really going on. And one of the most frightening polling things that I've seen is that close to half of the American people believe that Saddam Hussein had a direct role in the attacks of September 11th. And if that misinformation is what's mm -hmm. leading them to support this war, then how can we have democracy? How can people participate if they're unaware and misinformed? Well, democracy is alive and well here on Our Scene. Why? You get a chance to weigh in with your response to Andy Major and Diane Swords. They're with the Syracuse Peace Council. They oppose the war in Iraq. How do you feel? 451-2414. George, let's talk with James in Syracuse. Hello, James. Hello. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, to the young lady there that you have on your show, mm -hmm. I'd like to ask her if, by chance, they came over here and bombed Syracuse or Central New York, how would she respond to that? I think bombing wherever it happens is wrong. Uh, it shouldn't happen here. It shouldn't be happening there. And I think that we um, have the capability of finding third options. It's not a question of we either bomb or get bombed. There's a, th a third path, and that's through diplomacy and through um, worldwide disarmament. Yeah, I think his point is, do you then say it's time to fight back if we are, in fact, attacked here in the city of Syracuse? Well, we were attacked in New York City, and there was really no enemy to fight back against. Um, I think that many innocent civilians were killed in Afghanistan because we were seeking an enemy that we couldn't find in that way. Um, we live in a world in which we need to create peace in order to prevent war. War does, war always just provides the seeds for the next war. War always wrong then, in, in your opinion? Is there ever a justifiable use of military force? On a personal level, I don't believe so. Uh, I, I'm a conscientious objector to war. I believe war is wrong and wouldn't kill another person. Um, there, most people who oppose this war in Iraq don't take that position, however. They take the position that sometimes war may be necessary, but that, that our government has not made the case that it's true here. And if you look at international public opinion, that's overwhelmingly the case. And, and one of the things, the contradictions that we need to point out is that our government is insisting that all these other countries around the world support this war despite overwhelming opposition in their own countries. And if what we're encouraging them to do is act democratically, we should be saying, well, if 90% of your people oppose this war, then you really should listen to them mm -hmm. and not participate in it. Okay, let's uh, get more of you involved. Rebecca in Baldwinsville. Hi, Rebecca. Hi. Go How ahead. How are you? Good. I just have one comment. Whether you're for the war or you're for peace, I really think that it would be important for either side to make their main concern um, support for the troops who are over there and their families who are here and the troops who are here working to perpetuate this war because I just think it's so important to be supportive of that, no matter what position you take. All right, thank you for your comments. Thanks, Rebecca. Van in Syracuse, you're next. Hi, Van. Yeah, I've got a couple of points, actually. Right. One was, uh, how can you say that you support the troops, yet you tell them that you don't support what you're, they're doing? As soon as you say that you're not supporting what they're doing, then you're not supporting the troops. Well, let's let them answer that, Andy. Mm -hmm. Sure, that in the same way that if you're a parent, you support your child unconditionally, but you don't always support what they do. Our opposition and concern is to the decision makers in Washington, who are the folks who have initiated this war, who have sent these people into harm's way. And at the same time that they're saying they support the troops, they're cutting benefits to veterans. They're uh, setting up situations where veterans don't have access to health care. Those are the things that really support veterans, and the Bush administration is cutting back on those things. Have you ever, had a, have you ever held a pro-troops rally in support of the, the troops, and would you plan to do so in the future? We are wearing these green ribbons as part of a campaign that says we support the troops, and we believe the best way to do that is to bring them home safely rather than putting them in harm's way for an unjustified war. And I would also mention that there is a, a website for families 
um, who are families of military personnel who are opposed to the war but want to support their uh, people over there. All right. What is it's, that one? It's called Military Families Reach Out. Okay. All right. Marianne in Syracuse, you're next. Go ahead, Marianne. Hi, I just want to say I love your show. It's thank a you. great show. And I just want to thank you for having people from the Peace Council on you're welcome. today. It's just a pleasure to hear this view because I think we're being fed a lot of things that I don't necessarily believe in either from the media. So it's just wonderful that we live in a democracy and that you people are on today. Thank you all. Okay, democracy thank you in for action. for watching and for calling. So let's get uh, to as many callers as we can. Uh, moving right along with Peter in Syracuse next. Hi, Peter. Hi. Go ahead. Thank you for taking my sure. call. You know, I really admire these people for having the courage to stand up and speak their mind in a democracy. Now, let's look at the fact these people do support our military. To make an excuse saying that our troops are fighting there and you are speaking against them? No, they are not speaking against them. They are speaking for their life, for them to come and stay home alive. Now, let's look at some facts. Peter, the let me... British said that they had evidence of... Chemical weapons. Of chemical weapons and more. That's right. today, yeah, that's and the latest. all they did was a plagiarism of a thesis by an Arab student written about the war of 1991. Uh, Peter, let me, st let me stop you there. Uh, thank you for calling. I appreciate that. We're running late on the segment, though. Appreciate your thoughts, and uh, thanks for calling in. Robert and Manlius, you're next. Go ahead, Robert. My question for the conscientious objector is, what would he do if he were on the plane with the hijackers mm. and it's being taken over, people being killed, and they're about to crash into buildings? Yeah. Would you roll? I would try to do what I can to, and I would, using force in that sort of situation to try and stop what's happening is one thing. Uh, killing people is a different sort of thing. So I think there's times when limited use of force makes sense. All right, time for one more call, Dave. I think we do, George. Art in West Monroe. Hi, Art. How are you? Hi. How you doing? Good. Um, great show, you guys. Thank I you. I just have one comment. Um, I'm a, I spent three years in the Marine Corps during the Vietnam War. And I'm just surprised at this country with, with how many chicken hawks we have. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Call. Well, I don't know if people understand that, but I think what he's referring to is that the folks running this war in Washington within the Bush administration who are so pro-war, all of them avoided military service during Vietnam. And they didn't do so because they opposed the war in a conscientious way, but rather they used their positions, their family connections to avoid military chicken service. Chicken hawk. Is that what I mean, chicken hawk? Yeah. All right, let me ask you this. What's next for the Syracuse Peace Council? What's happening? Okay. We've got a large peace march scheduled for this coming Saturday meeting at Lincoln Junior High School on James Street in Syracuse at 1.30 p.m. We encourage folks to come out and join us for a, a strong for peace in this community. Let's you some information. Contact the Peace Council 472-5478 on the web at peacecouncil.net. We'll be hearing certainly more from Andy Major and Diane Swords from the Syracuse Peace Council, I'm sure, in upcoming programs. Thanks, Thanks for stopping Thanks, by today.